Hi guys and welcome back to So Sally O. So in today's video I will be doing a full Christmas cake decorating tutorial. It's nearly Christmas, I love Christmas cake. If you haven't already watched the Christmas cake making video then I will link that down below. But if you are after some unique Christmas cake decorating ideas for 2018 then please keep watching because I will be doing a full tutorial video on how I designed this Christmas cake. I will be using marzipan, I will be decorating the Christmas cake with fondant icing. So if you like this kind of thing then please keep watching. I'll also link down below my video from last year's Christmas cake. I do loads of baking and cake decorating and crafts and things for kids. So if you like that kind of thing then please also hit subscribe below, join the channel. I am hoping to reach 2,000 subscribers by Christmas, so let's see how we get on. Give the video a thumbs up and leave me a note in the comments. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye and happy Christmas. So to start off with then, you'll need some white fondant icing. I've got one kilogram here of Renshaw white icing. That's enough to cover my eight inch round cake. I've also chosen white marzipan again by Renshaw for this. You can use white or golden marzipan. And I think I've got 500 grams here, but you can use up to 750 grams, depending on how thick you want your marzipan to cover the cake. I've also got some apricot glaze here and a brush. You will also need kebab skewers, some edible glue, and a variety of candy melts. I've got pale green, dark green, and blue here from PME. And then a selection of ribbons, an icing smoother, rolling pin, and a selection of different white snowflakes or sprinkles. So to start off, then I've got a 10 inch board here for my eight inch round cake, and it's sitting on a 12 inch turntable. So just put a tiny amount of the apricot glaze onto the baseboard, to stick your fruit cake onto it. Place it on top and make sure that it is central. I'll put a link in the description below and also a card on the screen now so you can watch the video of how I made this really easy fruit cake. Then just cover the entire fruit cake top and sides with some apricot glaze. I've warmed this ever so slightly in the microwave which makes it a bit more runny and really easy to spread on. Now onto the rolling of the marzipan, use loads of icing sugar on your table or surface, also on your hands and on the marzipan because it gets really sticky. Just warm the marzipan by moulding it in your hands slightly and then roll it out into a big circle. I'm going to use the tin that I used to bake the cake in to measure out the top section of the marzipan. I find this is the easiest way to do it just because it gives the really nice right angles and a really nice crisp edge to the marzipan before you ice it. So I'm placing the tin on top of the marzipan upside down and measuring around, well cutting around, with a really sharp knife. Peel away the excess and then place that piece of marzipan on the top surface of your cake. Just smooth it out around the sides. You might find you have slightly too much like me, so I'm just cutting off a little bit of the excess here. And then onto the sides, just roll out some long, thin strips of marzipan. I'm using my knife to measure the height of the side of the cake, and that's gonna be the diameter of the piece of marzipan. You could do this in one long strip. I'm not quite sure why I ended up doing this in three smaller strips. But anyway, once it's all smoothed on the cake, you can't really see the difference. So just smooth it on, stick it onto the apricot glazed side of the cake, and here's the finished thing. I would have used slightly more marzipan on this, I think, if I did it again. Maybe 750 grams of marzipan, just to make sure the layers were a little bit thicker so that you wouldn't see the ridges from the fruit quite as much. And now for the icing, I'm just going to spread over with the brush, which I have cleaned in between, um, a little bit of egg white. And I'm doing this because I don't want the glaze, because I don't want it to be sticky and I don't want the orange colour to show through the icing. But egg white's really great. It's clear, it dries nicely, it sticks it on beautifully. So for the icing then, I'm using a combination of icing sugar and also corn flour onto my surface to make sure that it doesn't stick. I've softened out the one kilogram of sugar paste or fondant icing, just using my hands beforehand, and rolled it into a nice even ball. And then as you can see here, I'm taking quite a lot of care to roll out this piece of fondant to make sure that it is really neat and it's the perfect diameter. I'm using a piece of string here that I measured beforehand using two times the height of the side of the cake plus the entire diameter of the top of the cake so that will let me know I've got the right size piece of icing before I place that on top of the cake. I'm just focusing on the central point of the icing 
and then the central point of the cake also so that I know when I lift this I know exactly where to place it just lay it down on top and then you can see I'm working quite quickly but carefully with my hands to smooth down these ridges in the side which naturally fall when you place a piece of icing on top of any cake and I'm also going to use the smoother in a second to make sure the top and the side of the cake are really beautiful crisp right angles as much as possible so just smooth the icing down just be really really patient it sometimes doesn't feel like it actually wants to smooth down to be flat against the cake but you will get there and then just use a really sharp knife make sure it is vertical when you are slicing around the sides to trim off the excess so that you're not digging into the base of the cake as such and just either throw away the excess or eat it or make something else with it and then you can give it one last smooth down as this will be the final surface of your Christmas cake. Now here I'm using some diamante pins because we're going to be attaching the ribbon to the cake. For this one I've used this nice natural hessian as a base ribbon. I'm just here measuring the length of ribbon I need, finding which side I want to be the front and then pinning the ribbon at the back of the cake. I'm also going to use this green ribbon with stars on top as well to go on top of the hessian ribbon just to add a nice layered effect. You could use any ribbon you like in keeping with Christmas theme, again pinning it in the same place. And here you can see the two ribbons layered on top of each other nicely. Now onto the candy melts then, I've just separated them into three separate bowls and they're going in the microwave for about 30 seconds on a low heat. Keep stirring, keep putting them back in for 10-20 seconds at a time until they are nicely melted. I've trimmed my kebab sticks down into a variety of different heights so that the trees will be nice and varied once they are on the cake. You can see that the candy melts are now all nicely melted and ready to put into separate plastic piping bags. And I'm making sure that I'm going to drizzle over the melted candy melts so that the top of the tree will actually be the blunt chopped off end which will leave the sharp bottom end to stick into the cake. I'm just going to drizzle it up and down across the kebab stick to create these really cool Christmas tree effects and then straight away while the candy melts are still hot I'm sprinkling on a variety of snowflakes and white sprinkles to represent the snow. I've mixed up the colours slightly so I've used a dark green, a pale green and then I've mixed the blue into both of those separately into separate piping bags so I've actually got four different shades of green here so that when the trees are on the cake they kind of represent this really nice varied forest effect. So just keep going. I would also suggest doing a couple of extra spare trees just in case they get damaged in transit or before the big day itself. Here we have the finished iced cake and I've put a little bit of edible glue on here and sprinkled on a few more of the white sprinkles just to look a little bit like snow before I start placing in the trees. Start with the tallest trees to go at the back and also mix them up a little bit so that you've got a variety of the shades of green but also a variety of the different types of sprinkles you chose so they're not all together in one block. You can play around with this, just have a look, see what you think, position them nicely to give the desired effect. So here's the finished cake, I really hope you guys like it. I think it's really effective design but it's actually so so simple to do, it's just marzipan and icing, bit of ribbon, but I think the candy melt trees really make it special. You can use candy melts in so many different ways, so leave me a note in the comments if you think that I should do more videos in the new year on different uses of candy melts in my cake designs. Thank you so much for watching guys, have an amazing Christmas and I will see you again in the new year. Bye!